Okay, this is uh, Attack the Key, Own the Lock. This is Datagram. I'm Skylar. Um, about us. This is the only animation in the whole thing, just because it's <laughs> kind of funny. Uh, so I'm Skylar. I was one of the founding board members of the Open Organization of Lock Pickers US. Uh, I stepped down. I still pick under the tool banner, but I'm not really involved with the tool all that much anymore. Uh, I launched and let die non-destructive entry magazine, but the band's back together. Hopefully we'll launch again. But most importantly, I was on Wheel of Forge and... <laughs> and we got to talk about lock sport. I'll put a link to the clip some other time. Okay. Hi, I'm uh, DG. I'm a part-time forensic locks locksmith, full-time douchebag. <laughs> uh, I haven't been on any game shows, and uh, I run a few lock websites that uh, apparently the front row says suck, but uh, yeah. <laughs> you'll catch them at the end. Yeah, we'll get those in the resources. Uh, okay, go for it. Uh, does everybody know how locks work? or You know, you came to a lock talk... We're, we're hoping that you know how locks work. Show of hands, how many people don't know how locks work? It's okay if you don't. We'll do a brief overview. Okay. Oh, like two, three, all right, we'll do a really brief overview. Okay, here we go. Um, okay, the red pin is the key pin. The blue pin is the driver pin. There are typically five or six sets of these pins in a line in a lock. Uh, we call them key pin and driver instead of top and bottom because they're mounted upside down in other countries. Uh, so no confusion. You can see that the driver pin right now is blocking what we call the shear line. That's the line between the Bible of the lock, the round part, and the, oh, no, I'm a liar. The plug of the lock is the round part, and the Bible of the lock is the part that contains the driver and the spring. So the key pins are of different lengths. They correspond to different cuts of the key. When the key is in the lock, the, key, the top of the key pins will be raised to the shear line. The bottom of the driver pins will be sitting at the shear line, and the whole system can turn freely. Thank you very much to Deviant for these wonderful animations. Yeah. Big thanks to Deviant for these great animations. Always, always. Uh, that's how a lock works. Uh, I know we sped through that, but we have a lot of cooler stuff to talk about. Okay, so uh, in a lock, we have two, two kinds of security. You have the lock itself, but you also have keys. You can think of it similar to cryptography and a lot of digital stuff where you could always do this really crazy stuff to break the system itself, like the, the crypto system itself, but you could also steal keys, modify keys, do other interesting attacks. And so a lot of the talks uh, at DEF CON and a lot of other conferences are about ways to pick locks and open locks, but we never really get into this issue of key control and how, what can we do with modified keys? Now, obviously, nothing in this talk we're going to talk about using the working key because that's kind of obvious that the working key opens the lock. Yeah, the, the best lock pick is the functional key for the yeah. lock. Yeah. <laughs> so, so if we can do attacks with, with keys, then, then how do we prevent people from doing this or try and limit it? So higher security locks will have the, the blank distribution or availability will be limited. And getting the actual blanks or the locks themselves or the, the keyway profile, the cuts on the side, that may be limited as well. Uh, key control is also very important to prevent uh, just casual duplication, which is just going into a hardware store and getting a key duplicated. If you've ever had a you know, better than shitty lock, you've probably <laughs> had a, a problem like finding a, somebody to copy it. And simulation is when we don't need, per se, the key blank, because all keys are a piece of steel arranged in a pattern. So simulating that is, is easy on a lot of locks, even some of the higher end locks. And so simulating a, a, a key is, is important in security. If we could build a key that's very hard to simulate, either because of the shape of it, the type of cuts, or some have moving elements. Yeah, interactive stuff, elements We'll get as into well. it a bit later. Um, if you can't simulate that, that's better for, for security, you know, in a very small way, but it all adds up. Uh, at the end I of mean, the everything day. we're going to show you today is based on key-based attacks. So, yeah, it can be really important to keep us from getting access to one. Okay. Uh, all right, so... Uh, we're going to talk, uh, obviously, about attacking the key here. The bidding depths and the code. The bidding depths are the lengths of those key pins that we just saw and how a lock works. Um, and every lock has a bidding, no matter how ridiculous or elaborate it is. It's just based on different mechanisms. Um, so pins, tumblers, et cetera, et cetera. Um, the, uh, the keyway is a big part of this as well. Uh, very restrictive keyways can be uh, um, you know, extraordinarily hard for you to manipulate with picks getting in there, but if you can actually reproduce the key or even the key blank, the, the restrictions of the keyway don't matter anymore. Um, we're also going to talk about a, uh, well, you'll see that in a little bit anyway, the best situation. Great. Yeah. Uh, the model of the lock, of course, uh, very important. Um, uh, I'm actually not entirely sure what more there was to say about the model of the lock. Okay, if we have this key here, right? 
So if we just have a key, if we've never seen the lock, the key oh. tells us a lot about the lock. So the bidding depths, the bidding depths are the pattern of cuts on the key, right? So this you can see. Why don't you all pull your keys out? That'll be hilarious for later. Yeah, 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 yeah. If you if you have keys with you, feel free to pull them out. We're gonna do a demo in a second. Okay. So if you can see the pattern of cuts and you could you could remember that, you could simulate or duplicate the key. Now, just the key bow itself tells you what model lock is, because this key bow is well, it was patented for a long time. So this is a Schlage key bow. So every time I see this, I know that this goes in a Schlage lock. And even reproduced ones, uh, you know, generic ones tend to use the same the bows same one, for yeah. their own sudden identif uh, quick identification. Yeah, the two most common are Schlage and Quickset in the U.S. And I'm sure everyone has one or both of those on their key ring right now. So on top of that, the key might be stamped with the manufacturer and the model. In this case, this is a Primus, so it's not a normal Schlage lock. Uh, on top of that, we get the keyway. Sometimes there's a keyway number. A lot of information comes from just this one key, even though we may not know what lock it goes to in, in a certain facility or, or at all. Sweet. <clears throat> all right. Yep. Uh, okay, so physical access to keys. This talk is broken down into the different levels of access you have to the key. Uh, visual access, physical access, getting a key blank, an incorrect key, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, physical access, of course, is the holy grail. You can do a lot with it. The amount of time that you have access to that key will uh, very much determine the quality of the attack. But even if you only have physical access to a key for a couple of seconds, um, you can already do uh, uh, this Quite wonderful attack that, we are, that we're going to demonstrate for all of you. Anybody who has keys out right now, if you want to, if you want to be super brave, pass it to your neighbor. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, if you don't, that's okay. Take your key out. The soft skin of the inside of your supple, wrist. Supple, supple the skin. supple skin. I moisturize so this goes better. Uh, and really, just press the key in there. And uh, you really only need a few seconds on it, two or three seconds, and you get a beautiful, beautiful uh, impression of all of the cuts in the key. Uh, and that'll stay on there for plenty of time, certainly more than enough time for you to, you know, oh, oh, that's nice. Yeah, it looks like my key. Oh, very cool. I got to go to the bathroom and cell phone photo. Um, you know, so, so yeah. immediately. Well, one thing you should consider is that you're saying, well, physical access to keys, all of you, if, especially if you work in IT, you've had... Uh, you've been on site somewhere, you've been a job, you may not have the key all the time, but people are just like, you're like, hey, I need to get into that room. And they're like, well, here's the key. Just give it back to me real quick. So the, the security lies in them getting it back, but they have no idea what you might have done with it while you had it. And again, this is very common, even in higher security situations. Right, you even just get the sidebar pins. I'm sorry, I've never done a Primus before. I get the high security part, too. This is beautiful. <laughs> sorry, this is awesome. You can keep going. Yeah. <laughs> um, just consider that, that now I forgot. Yeah. Uh, even temporary access. You'll get temporary access to people's keys all the time if you really pay attention to it. Yeah. And it's convenient. Yeah. Again, security versus convenience. Everybody chooses convenience, especially with locks and keys. Absolutely. Sweet. Uh, okay, so direct measurement. If you have access to the key for a little bit longer, uh, with these key gauges that we have pictured here, uh, this one has, looks like... I'm trying to figure out what ones. Well, it's got three different um, uh, locking systems on there, three different key types on there with their exact cut depths. And with one of these, you can very quickly just shink it right through each one of the, uh, each one of the cuts and very quickly figure out what the actual numbered bidding is. Because each of those key pins actually have a number associated with them. You know that code. You can walk into a hardware store and say, hey, I need da-da-da-da-da cut. And they'll cut you a key that'll work forever for you. You just need that numbered code. Uh, yeah, with with uh, with further access, you know, you can go with the micrometer, really really get down to exacting depths. And with higher security locks, uh, you know, you're, you're, the key gauge isn't going to do it for you every time. You're going to need to get micrometer calipers, etc. Um, and we're going to talk uh, in just a second here about even even longer access to the key. Yeah, and the other thing is that um, all almost all keying systems are freely available. It's not secret knowledge yeah. for, and it can't be because you know you can just buy enough locks until you figure out every bidding depth for it. If you really, really wanted to get that deep into it, but all of this stuff is available online. All of these depths, like I can tell you, I'm pretty sure the top is Schlage and the second one is Quickset, and so on and so forth, or the the bottom one's Quickset. But uh, I'm sorry. Okay, Boom! It's, it's a Thank best you. One. It's it's the best system. It's the best series. We're retarded. He's retarded. And shit face. <laughs> uh, excellent. 
So, longer access to the key. So, if you want to take a very good impression, you know, with your wrist, um, you're basically restricted to either sight reading by just looking at it or, or quickly measuring it. If you have longer access, you can create an uh, impression with which you can cast a working key. Now, it doesn't work for some higher security locks that have advanced features, but as you'll see next, it works for some very, very, very good locks. So, this is just a simple two-part putty and you just rub it together, you put the key in and then you let it dry and you take the key off. And then with this, obviously this isn't very good and it's only one-sided, but you can do full 3D stuff and it's very easy. And How long does that take? Um, to harden only about uh, three or four minutes. Oh, not bad. Not, not very long. With something like this, especially not very long, something that's more complicated, might, you might want to leave longer just to make sure you get it. But it is very quick and this is, uh, once this dries, it's actually pretty rubbery so you can just pull the key out. Um, and the, the impression will be fine. So it even works on very secure locks. This is an EVA 3KS lock, and you can see there's all these little squiggles. And in the key, these are laser track, little, little laser tracks. <laughs> and uh, so we could cast a key off this, even though this is a very, very nice lock. And you see we even get additional stuff, like I, I'm pointing on the screen like you guys can see it. But, uh, <laughs> um, on the left, we have that big bump. That's when you turn the key, little pieces come in to hold the key in place while it's turned. Um, and then on the top and the bottom, you can't quite see it because it's, it's uh, a full 3D, but there's a, a profile on the top and bottom, which we'll talk about key profiles later. But, uh, the next one is your... Yeah. yeah, and this is one of the best... Well reputed as one of the best locks in the world. This is an Abloy ProTech, and even it has a restricted keyway. I would still say it's, the, it's one it's, of the best. It's probably one of the best mechanical locks in the world, but you can easily 3D impression a key, and the, the bottom is a casted key. So we took a 3D impression, and then we casted it with just, uh, it's just like very hard plastic or like glass reinforced epoxy or something like that. And uh, you can see this lock has angled bidding cuts and all these little careful tracks down it and some dimples on the right. And we replicated all that, and the key works. And so it, work, it works perfectly. So once again, just to drive the point home, uh, you know, this is a product that's been on the market for more than a decade. There are only some fairly sketchy rumors and a little bit of video in the last like year, year and a half of potential attacks on this lock. It's a very high security lock. But if you lose access to your key for even the five minutes it takes to, to get the putty to dry, it it's, doesn't matter. It, has, it doesn't matter at all because we now have the key to your lock. Uh, so visual access to the key, uh, you know, this is uh, obviously a big step down from physical access, uh, but a lot of people, um, and you can well, too, it doesn't take... How many of you are wearing your, key, your keys outside your pocket, like on a little key ring connected to your belt loop? Can yeah, you yeah, it's Everybody okay. It. It's okay. Everybody's going to look at you and try to read your key, but it's okay. <laughs> Raise your hand. Um, I actually, uh, on the subway, so I found out that my cell phone, which always makes the picture noise yeah, when you're too. taking pictures, if you put the headphone jack in, it only makes the sound <laughs> in your ears. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I was on the subway that, taking... That, that's an O-Day right there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was taking pictures of people's keys on the subway. Um, uh, not not to do anything terrible with, just... Research, to, people. Yeah, research. yeah, research. Uh, just just to confirm, and I mean, people would sit down and their keys would just sort of splay out on the, you know, on the carabiner they're on or whatever. And really, a quick cell phone photo, and I was, I was, given, I was given enough time to get a good sight read uh, and get an easy estimation. So when we talk about sight reading and estimation, the, the big thing there is that, you know, in general, uh, a lot of us can look at a key and very quickly say, okay, that's, you know, 334575. You know, we, we can see by the variations in the key itself what that code it is that we need to get it cut by. Um, on, t on, on top of that, a lot of the lower security ones, you can look on your own keys right now. Again, play along. They have oh. the code printed directly on them. And that, oh yeah, and and that's tragic. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, uh, so the reason that we say estimation, though, is that maybe you're like, oh yeah, you know, I saw that for a second. It's blah blah blah. blah. Most of us, I would say, that, that really try to practice at it. Within three, maybe five keys, we can cut three or five keys, and one of those is going to work. You know, one one of those is going to be the accurate one. Yeah, um, because you you don't always need to know the exact code, but the variation between them is a very very big step. And on top of this, there's you keep talking. Look at that one. <laughs> um, there's keying specifications, and sometimes in a keying system you can't have like a zero depth next to a six depth. There's a, a, a maximum limit in, in a lot of locks. So you can know like this can't possibly be more than four up from, from whatever this is. And then from there you can just narrow it down really quickly. And it, you don't need a lot of experience to do it. Is that mine or yours? That's it. Oh boy. 
Um, you don't need a lot of experience to do it. And again, <laughs> you can estimate and you can also get photography. And in the last uh, two or three years, a lot of research has gone into long-range photography on keys. Uh, the University of California at San Diego, there's a team there who, uh, yeah, the, the important thing is to note that it is just...